McLeod. He's a former aid worker and senior UN official, and he joins me here in London. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. You've pleasure. made some. You've made some very disturbing uh, comments and allegations about the behavior of UN aid workers in conflict yeah. and crisis zones. Could you tell us what those are? Well, we've estimated over the last decade there are about 60,000 victims of sexual exploitation and abuse at the hands of UN staff. It's an estimation. 60,000. It's an estimation that comes directly from the UN's own numbers. Okay. 145 cases involving 311 victims in 2016 alone just in peacekeeping. That's what the, Gen the Secretary General said as part of his 2016 annual review. Mm -hmm. In 2017, he then said the problem isn't just in peacekeeping, the problem is the entire UN system and probably bigger outside of peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. So there's 311 victims, double it to over 600 victims. Mm -hmm. Here in the UK and in the US, around about 1 in 10 victims of rape reported. Mm -hmm. If you assume 1 in 10 victims of rape report against the UN, and I think it would be a lot less, mm -hmm. those 611 victims represent 6,110 victims. So that's your methodology victims. to that's get method to that number. And I'm saying it's an estimation, it's not science, but it's based on their numbers. But it's a staggering number if it's it anywhere near the truth. But you've been This is there. the size of a town, a yes, small town. Basically. that's correct. Yeah. And this is the problem. This problem is not Oxfam. This problem is not Britain. This problem is in the entire system. The system doesn't have the rigorous human resources systems for prevention, training, detection and, critically, prosecution. About the only agency I know mm -hmm. that systematically does hand dossiers over to police if their staff have been abusing, particularly children, is uh, Save the Children UK. No one else does it. And just look at Oxfam. For them to think that they didn't have, have to hand the dossier over to the police in mm -hmm. Haiti is staggering. But even more, if one of those prostitutes turns out to be a child, there right. could be a breach of either Belgian or UK sex tourism laws. It's a breach of the law here. And even though I've because, been saying... And when you say Belgium, is because Roland van der Hauermeyeren, the head of mission yeah. in Haiti, is Belgium. For three days now, I've been challenging Oxfam to hand the dossier over to Scotland Yard mm -hmm. and to the Brussels police. And mm -hmm. while they're saying we're taking everything seriously, they've still not gone to the police to say, we're unsure if one of these prostitutes was a child. We are therefore unsure if British law has been broken. Can you please investigate? Us. But if you say that Save the Children UK is the only one that you're that aware of, of yeah. that you're aware of that has these dossiers, does it mean that you yourself have knowledge or have witnessed dossiers compiled, for instance, uh, complaints lodged against certain individuals, and that the charity sat on that dossier Absolutely. without? Absolutely. And, and can you name them? I won't name them here and now, but we know, and you can Google it and see it, that the aid industry is littered full of the corpses of whistleblowers who were chased out. If you go back to the whistleblower movie starring Rachel Weisz about that brave American mm -hmm. policewoman who blew the whistle on the trafficking of children for the use of UN staff in Bosnia way back in the 1990s, mm -hmm. the people who blew the whistle on the food for sex scandal, the people who've been blowing the whistle in Central African Republic, mm -hmm. these are people who should be getting medals of honour, but instead they've been drummed out. And I want to go back to the systematic problem, if I may. Yeah, and... Yes, go ahead, because then I have a UN response I'd like to read specifically yep. with regards to that 60,000. If we number. want to see real and meaningful change mm -hmm. and win back the trust of the aid industry, people need to go to jail. Right. Because since modern economies, Western countries have developed sex tourism laws, mm -hmm. these people who are having sex, particularly with children, under the auspices of aid umbrellas over in countries like the Central African Republic, mm -hmm. have broken their domestic laws. And they should be held to account here. And more than that, the law says that you can be guilty of an offence if you aid, abet and assist. When are we going to realise mm -hmm. that turning a willful blind eye for 30 years mm -hmm. is aiding and abetting this. So When you say willful blind eye, that's really implying that people knew the gravity of the alleged crime and well, covered it up intentionally. Huh. The Secretary General, Kofi yeah. Annan, lists as his, one of his biggest regrets not cracking down on the pedophilia. Ban Ki-moon says that. Mm -hmm. That's 20 years of leadership just in those two men. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, don't believe a word I say. Google it and you'll be surprised at for how long this has been happening. And this is something you've witnessed in yes. your time as an aid worker. 
And when you witnessed it, is this something you brought up the chain as yes. well and said this is going on? Yeah. And, and how were you treated? Then? Not very well. And in the end, I turned around in 2009 and I put in my book, I cited it quite clearly. There were three reasons I left the United Nations. Lack of effectiveness, lack of efficiency and lack of desire to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. A subjective opinion that I think on balance the system is a net harm. And thirdly, the failure to respond to the institutionalised pedophilia. Because here's the big problem, yeah. if I can have a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a human resources system that effectively filters out these people and doesn't prosecute them, mm -hmm. we're now a magnet for the dysfunctional. The British crime authorities have been warning since 1999 yeah. that as we crack down on pedophilia in the developed world, the predatory pedophiles are now going to the developing world. The British authorities' words, not mine. Their chosen methodology to get access to children is to join a children's charity. The warnings are there. So you need, you need more of a system there to certainly investigate the past of some of the individuals. In but let me, I need to yes. get the UN response in because we put this to them directly. Yeah. The estimate of 60,000 people potentially sexually molested, abused, raped. Uh, and this is what they, this has come directly from the deputy spokesperson for the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. It reads, sexual harassment is a scourge that affects every sector of society and the UN is doing its utmost to combat it. When it comes to humanitarian aid, we are working to ensure that no one who carries out such assistance on our behalf will prey on the vulnerable people who we are meant to serve. We have a policy of zero tolerance regarding any such harassment. Perpetrators need to be held to account and victims need to be heard. They did not reference that number specifically. This is the response from the UN. Hala, you've been in this business a long time. Mm -hmm. You know that exact statement could have and probably would have been given by Kofi Annan mm -hmm. and Ban Ki-moon. What we need to see is actual change. Rather than saying there's zero tolerance, mm -hmm. demonstrate there's zero tolerance. We need to put people in jail. I've got a challenge now for the Secretary General in mm. front of the whole world right now. Make the declaration mm -hmm. that the UN Convention on Privileges and Immunities does not apply for child sex tourism. Make the statement really clear. You will never assert immunity for a child sex crime in front of any so, court. We'll, we'll be I just want to get you on one thing, which is mm -hmm. you, in all the disaster zones and conflict areas you've been in, me as well, I have seen so much good work yeah. being done by aid workers, yeah. and I fear sometimes that this is getting lost a little bit, because I agree that we should focus on those who commit uh, crimes and those who act unethically. Is there a worry there that by bringing all of this up, not saying we shouldn't talk about it, but that some people yeah. will just be so turned off by it that they'll say no matter what, I do or how much money I give, it will be wasted or misappropriated? Holly, you're spot on. This is not an opportunity to cut aid. This is an opportunity to fix aid, mm -hmm. but we've got to realise it's now got so big that we've let the bad apples in, and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm sorry to some of you viewers for what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. It's summed up by an 11 year old girl in Banu who said, I didn't have breasts yet and he still raped me. Mm -hmm. We can't let this happen any longer. Yep. No more words, zero tolerance, real zero tolerance. Thank you, Andrew McLeod, for uh, joining us. Really enlightening discussion, and um, I know our viewers will have a lot of reaction to it. Thank you.